Hi, I'm Craig. You may recognize me as Stuttering Craig from way back in the old internet days, and it's time to tell a story. It's been a little bit since I've done something like this, so I thought I'd uh, break back the old uh, curtain, pull it back a little bit, and tell a story from way back in the old internet, because you guys seem to enjoy these things, and like I said, uh, it's been a while since I've done this. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, machinima. Machinima uh, was at one time a major player in the world of video game online media, and uh, I will be telling you guys about how Machinima tried to acquire Screw Attack. But before we do that, make sure you guys, if you guys enjoy this type of content, classic stuff, looking back at old, old content of the old days of the internet yesteryear, make sure you subscribe to my channel, and of course, hit the thumbs up button. If we hit 50,000 subscriptions, guess what? I'll be adding a new day, because I right now I'm releasing videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon central time. Okay, thanks for that. Appreciate that. So, Machinima. I, I feel like we need to do a little background here on Machinima before we get into the story. So allow me to do this. Let me pull up my desktop pack capture. Here is Machinima. Machinima.com. If you remember back in the day, Machinima was on top of everything. They were the intro that you saw. They were the epitome of what you wanted to be. When the multi-channel networks, MCNs, were a thing, Machinima was a leader in the clubhouse, man. 11.7 million subscribers, and I thought, hey, we can talk about it, but let's just do, let's just let them tell you about them. Machinima is the most notorious purveyor and cultivator of fandom and gamer culture. The, uh, this channel features current popular content, such as BFS, Super Best Friends Play, Christopher Walkin' Through, which is hilarious, along with classics like Gamer Poop, Arby in the Chief, Sanity Not Included, and more. Uh, so there you go. Walkthroughs in a video game based show. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, sounds good. Oh, check this. <laughs> Walking Through is a video game based show revolving around the impersonations of Christopher Walken, Morgan Freedom, Freedom, Freeman, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and more. So there you go. Um, that is Machinima. It was, it was a hub of gamer content, uh, but it's been wiped off the face of the earth. Since then, uh, this channel was uh, well past 12 million subscribers at one point. Uh, but now if you go and you look at their Twitter account, doesn't exist. If you look at their, uh, their Instagram, doesn't exist. Uh, this is the logo most people think of when they think of uh, Machinima. This right here popping in. And they, they rebranded this a few years ago uh, right before they shut it down uh, back in early 2019. So it's been over three years since they shut this down. This was on, in Reddit uh, in early in January 2019. I can't believe it's been that long. So there's a little background for you. At one point, if you watched internet videos, you watched it, you saw something on Machinima. Uh, Machinima and Screwtech's business models were actually kind of similar, except Machinima went to YouTube way earlier and uh, brought on, uh, they, they took some seed funding, which Screwtech never did, and um, they then used that money to hire salespeople to uh, then make it uh, attractive for creators to work with them. Because the idea was that on YouTube, once again, you got to put this in a, in a frame of mind, on YouTube at the time, it wasn't like today where you could make money, I'd say fairly easily online. YouTube can, you could, YouTube can uh, do that. If you have any sort of audience, you can monetize uh, with ads and such like that. Now, the selling point from Machinima was, hey, we're going to sell advertisements for you. Um, and we're also going to uh, potentially bring you sponsorships, and that's where they use their money. They they invested in content, and they invested in salespeople. So uh, Machinima chose that route. We chose to go with events and uh, in all sorts of other ways. But at the end of the day, it was all about content. And I feel like you need to remember that as this story prevails. So uh, at the time, this was probably 2010 or so, 2000, maybe 2011, uh, several years before I actually sold to full screen, which once again, I'll be telling that story in due time. So make sure you guys subscribe for that. Um, but I, we, we were working with game trailers at the time. We were working with IGN at the time, uh, game trailers where we had our uh, top tens video game vaults and angry video game nerd episodes on, uh, and with IGN, I believe we were, we were uh, creating the Armory, which was Destin series for IGN at the time. The irony now that Destin now pretty much runs the show from a content perspective at IGN. Hmm, crazy how it works out. Anyways, um, so we're working with those two companies, and I thought, hey, it'd be really great to work with Machinima. I've never actually spoke to these guys before. We'll see how it goes. So, um, so I reach out and I say, hey, uh, I run the screw attack thing. So they've heard of us, of course. We, we, I knew who Machinima was. They knew who we were, but we never had any sort of conversation. So I get, go in and uh, I schedule a meeting with um, 
what is I, I believe I don't remember which Debevoir brother it was, but it was one of the Debevoirs, and uh, I believe they had some some poor reputation later down the line. Uh, I didn't know these guys from Adam. I had no idea who they were, uh, but I went in and spoke with one of them. And uh, I went in to pitch them on a pot potentially creating like a retro theme series around uh, uh, for them and appearing it, uh, having it appear on Machinima because my, my thought process was uh, similar to it is now, cross promotion, collaborating, it helps. And Machinima was a giant billboard. Just how YouTube is a billboard for a lot of people and their social media now, uh, game trailers for us, IGN for us, and potentially Machinima would be a giant billboard for ScrewAttack.com if our content was good enough and it appeared on their platforms. Worked for game trailers, worked for IGN. Let's see if it works for Machinima. I don't even remember what I was pitching to Machinima uh, that day. I just remember going in and with the idea of pitching a, a show. Uh, during that process uh, of, of sitting down and just kind of talking about, hey, what if we did a show together? Uh, we started talking about our businesses and uh, I talked about, you know, what things that we had done. We had uh, two successful SGCs, which was our live events under our belt. So it must have been around 2009, 2010 when we started talking. So I think we had a couple SGCs under our belt. Uh, so we had proven that we could do that. Uh, we had our merchandise, and I was talking about our merchandise. Uh, I was talking about some other plans that we wanted to do. Uh, we were talking about uh, adding some sort of premium membership to our platform at the time, I believe, which was which eventually turned into like the Screw Attack Advantage program. Which nowadays, if you don't have a premium membership on your platform. Um, you're insane, right? There, everybody has a premium. Even YouTube has YouTube Premium, uh, and other people leverage uh, through Patreon or uh, other other things like that. Um, so we were thinking about doing that, and these are things that Machinima hadn't really talked about or at least discussed. So I go to this meeting to talk about uh, pitching a show. Uh, I leave that meeting with this with Debevoir saying, "Look, you need to think about how much you want to be acquired for." And I was like, what? You know, it was one of those things where I was like, what, what are you talking about, right? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Because um, at that point, I had, I had not even considered the idea of an acquisition of Screw Attack. It was so not even on the table. This was something that didn't happen. Internet content companies were not sold uh, at this time. So um, once again, putting this way before uh, companies like Maker existed uh, and, and companies that uh, were CPMs, and full screen, weren't, they weren't even a gleam in the eye of, company, of, of the, their creators at the time. So um, Machinima's like, hey, you need to think about how much you want to be acquired for. And at this time, I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't even know. Like, this is so far out of left field. I, I remember um, calling my wife and being like, what? You know, what, 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 is, what, are, they, what are they talking about? So um, I keep this to myself. Um, and obviously, I'm not going to be like, hey, Ben, guess what? Machinima wants to buy us, right? Um, I may have talked about it later when it kind of became more of a thing because I continued the conversation with emails like, like I should, okay? Um, and that conversation continued for, uh, well, I, I want to say like six months. Uh, it was a long conversation and emails were sent, some weren't responded to. Uh, you know, I'd send them out to them. Hey, I wanted to see what you're thinking. Uh, but we never actually got to the point of talking about money. Right? It was all about, hey, this is really cool. We'd love to work with you, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I, uh, we ended up meeting in person again. I remember going out to LA and meeting with, uh, with one of the Deb of Waz again. Once again, I, I may have been both of them. I legitimately am extremely fuzzy on the meeting itself. Outside of uh, during that meeting, uh, after you know weeks and months of just kind of flirting with each other, um, they, uh, they were very blunt about, about things. Um, I went in and, and I was like, so, you know, how, I, I, just talking super high level, how do you think this would work out? Um, you know, what do we do with, with uh, you know, my team? Do they, how are they incorporated? Things like that. This is, once again, super high level conversation. And they said to me, and I'll never forget this. They said, well, really what we want is you because you're the guy who makes this thing go, right? And I was like, okay, but this is a company and I'm not like leaving my guys behind. Um, they said, look, we really want you um, and, and we want you to come in and, and, and do a lot of the stuff you've done for Screw Attack for us. And I was like, well, you know, okay, but where does that leave Nick and Ben and 
um, you know, whoever was with us at the time. That was always my thought. What about the guys? Um, and I remember specifically saying, well, what about our content? You know, we have, we have our video game vaults and top tens and, and death battle. And uh, the next sentence was the death nail to the whole deal. Uh, they said, fuck your content. We can get content. We can get a million views right now just by bringing in uh, other people to create content for Machinima. We don't care about your content. And as somebody who's creative and somebody who has put their heart and soul into creating content, that is the last thing you want to hear. So pretty much the door slammed shut before uh, they finished the period on their sentence. I was uh, so turned off by that thought process. And ultimately, that thought process is kind of what killed them. You know, we'll, we'll, just get, we'll just get more. We'll just get more content. We'll get more views. We don't need to worry about that. And the thing that they failed to realize was that our content is what allowed us to create SGC, is what allowed us to sell merchandise, so it is what allowed us to do everything that we did. The content was the core of literally everything. And to hear them say that, that was literally the last time I spoke with them. I was like, thanks. I don't think this is going to work out. I appreciate it. And, uh, and you know, maybe there was like one more email exchange, but that was pretty much it. I was like, I really, you know, if, if you're going to speak that way about the content we reproduce. And I, I must have, my face must have, I must have had some sort of tell where I was like, uh-uh, you know, with my face when they said that, because they knew, they knew too. Um, because you don't speak like that to people. You don't speak to content creators that, oh, well, you know, fuck your content. Um, that, that, that really resonated with me. Um, and it, I didn't even have to worry about what happened, what would happen to my guys because, um, you know, my team at the time, they were the ones who were creating the content, right? And I was this business guy who, who was trying to grow the business. And you don't talk about content and the people who make content like that. So, you know, you got to respect what they do. So, um, that was the end of the end of the conversation there, and it never continued on. Um, obviously, uh, the the finale with with Machinima. The irony of all this is that several years later, I sold to Full Screen, um, and Full Screen was later acquired by AT and T. After that acquisition, uh, AT and T then acquired. Um, well, I guess Full Screen or AT and T acquired uh, Rooster Teeth, and then they merged us together, right? They screw attack and rooster teeth came together. But what's even more ironic is that AT&T owns Machinima now. And Machinima is just a brand name now. It is a nothing. Uh, and I've talked about the cost of acquiring screw attack back, which it's not going to happen. Uh, it's just, it's just honestly too ludicrous to even think about. But uh, the cost to acquire Machinima is even stupider. It is multi-million dollars to acquire a dead brand. Um, and, uh, cause I asked and, uh, I was kind of blown away with that. I was like, wow, you're just, you got this, these dead brands and you're just going to shelf them for, uh, for lots of zeros. So anyways, uh, it's crazy to think about how things could have gone, uh, and how miserable I would have been in that type of setting with, uh, people who didn't respect the content creators that were literally the foundation of everything that they do. And I think that was ultimately the downfall of Machinima. Uh, they thought it was too easy. They didn't respect the people that, that created for them. They locked in a bunch of kids to a bunch of long contracts. And ultimately, uh, if you don't value the people that work for you, then, uh, then word travels fast. That's exactly what happened with Shinema because I do not think their brand or anything is worth any close to multiple million dollars right now. Uh, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot vault because I still think it's, it's toxic. So, um, so yeah, there you go. That is the story of how Machinima tried to acquire Screw Attack and uh, the in and out of it. Uh, I'm trying to think if I if I forgot anything in there. Uh, do, 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 do. Nope, nope. Like I said, never got to uh, never got to a price, and that was probably one of the biggest things. Uh, I would have been really interested to see how much they would have uh, put on the table to uh, potentially acquire Screw Attack. Um, it probably would have been nothing. <laughs> so uh, you know, I think all all wells that all well that ends well in some way, shape, or form. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you are new so you get more stories like this next time I tell them. Uh, I like to look back on classic internet videos here on the channel, just like uh, our boy James Rolfe looks like back at uh, classic internet games or classic games. So, uh, you know, there's tons of people looking at classic games. I like to look back at classic videos. So uh, you guys have a great day. Remember, people are going to try to bring you down. Don't let them. You guys got a goal. Go get it. See you guys later. Bye-bye.